In the first video, I created a simple static server to serve files uh, using Go. So if we run the server, we can see that we can get to our static index.html on port 3000. And so here's the application. I added some additional static assets. And uh, there we have our code. And so what we're going to do is we're going to add an API endpoint. So uh, using the serve mux, we're going to add a handler function. And we're going to look for anything that says a that has API hello as the path. And we're going to use a say hello handler function to uh, write out our response. So let's create the say hello handler function. And it will have two parameters, a response writer and a pointer to the request. The response writer is what we use to write out our data to the client and the uh, pointer to the request is the request from the client. So we're going to write out hello world and in order to write it out we have to cast it to an array of bytes because the response writer takes bytes. So we have hello world and now if we restart our server and we get a port 3000 API hello we see that we get our text hello world okay great uh, but a lot of times we want to pass some parameters along with that and a lot of times we want to pass those parameters in with the uh, path the URL path which is the part between this first slash and the first uh, URL parameter uh, and so now if we add a trailing slash we can pass in additional data after hello so we can put in foo here and it will still route correctly um, if we get rid of the slash however we notice that we can't add additional information after the hello because it will no longer uh, match the, the route will no longer match so adding back our trailing slash we are now going to use a regular expression to extract the string after the hello as a name parameter. So let's bring the regular expression package in and that will be used to um, extract that parameter. So let's create a regular expression that looks for the string slash API slash hello and then any word characters after that will be considered the uh, name. Okay, so backslash, double backslash to escape the first backslash, W plus. Now let's um, get the match, check to see if our, our request matches that. And we're going to get the um, substring match, meaning that uh, we're going to extract the portion that's in the parentheses. So now if we have a match, so the matches is not equal to nil, and the first matched value is not equal to the empty string, we are going to write out the hello name. And we'll use the sprintf um, function in the fumped package to format hello percent %s, uh, and then we pass it in the name value. Now, if we uh, don't get a name value, we're going to write out hello anonymous. So again, casting it to an array of bytes because the uh, response writer takes bytes and not strings. Uh, we can now restart our server. And if we go now to API hello foo, it will say, or we start with uh, the empty value we get anonymous and if we add foo we get hello foo okay great but it's kind of a little bit error prone and tedious to extract parameters from a URI using regular expressions so we're going to bring in a, uh, a third-party package from Julian Schmidt which is his excellent HTTP router and we're going to use that to uh, set up our path so when we use the go get command we see that we bring in Julian Schmidt's uh, HTTP router into our source directory. So replacing um, the regex package with a reference to um, Julian Schmidt's package. Um, 
we can now substitute out uh, the serve mux with an HTTP router. So we'll use the HTTP router new function to create a new router. Uh, now with the HTTP router, our strategy is going to be to try to satisfy the a API endpoints, but if it's not found, then use the file server from NetHttp uh, to try to serve the static asset. And then, if it's not found among the static assets, we will return a 404 not found. So instead of a handler func, what we're going to use is the HTTP router get method to give it a URI uh, to listen to for uh, get requests on that URI. So get slash API slash hello. And then we'll use colon name to indicate that we're expecting a uh, named parameter called name. And we're going to invoke our say hello function. All right, so. OK, now we need to make some changes to the say hello function. We can get rid of the regular expression. Uh, we need to add an additional third parameter, which is an array of uh, path parameters that are extracted by the HTTP router. And that's going to come in the, in the params parameter. Uh, so we can now get the name by using the byName method on the params array to return the name parameter. So now we just need to check to see if name not equal to the empty string. And then instead of matches one, we can just say uh, as printf and name. OK, so that doesn't change. So now we restart our server. And oops, looks like we have a little bit of a syntax error. I left off a paren on say after say hello. So OK, let's add that paren in. Let's restart our server. Let's go to the API hello foo endpoint. And we see hello foo. Excellent. OK, now let's take off foo and see what happens when we don't send a parameter we get a 404. And that's because we are now stating, uh, telling HTTP router that we're expecting a name parameter after API hello. So we're going to use the get method to add an additional route, which is API hello without a additional path parameter. And we're going to go ahead and use the same uh, handler function to handle that response. So now, if we go to uh, the empty, we'll see hello anonymous. And if we add our path parameter of foo, we will see hello foo. And now we have a simple HTTP API.